The early space program was a uh, adventure that I just couldn't believe that I was involved with. Uh, it was a continuation of the uh, kind of uh, relationships that I had had in the military and in flight tests. Uh, absolute trust, a high-risk environment, absolutely spectacular leaders. There are certain events in life that you never forget. And the, uh, the lunar landing, and in particular the last seconds leading up to the landing will never be forgotten. We had battled to get to the surface. Uh, we had problems with communications, we had minor electrical. Uh, navigation, we were concerned about that. And as the crew took over at uh, about two minutes prior to landing, uh, searching for a landing site, we knew that they were going to be using a lot more fuel uh, than we had expected. And I had a single controller in the room. The room became totally silent just about two minutes prior to landing. And this controller was just calling out the seconds of fuel remaining. Five and a half pounds. 60 seconds. Lights on. And it was just 60 seconds, 30 seconds. And then we heard the crew say, we're kicking up some dust. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. Four forward. And Four just forward, that, as, right as uh, Bob Carlton, who was my uh, uh, controller in the lunar module, responsible for the uh, propulsion systems, called out fifth. And then we heard the crew going through the shutdown. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. And then we had Houston Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. And this room that had been battling to get to the surface was absolutely silent. The unfortunate thing is no controller had an opportunity to absorb the emotion of that landing because we had to work for the next two hours, nonstop. Then we could celebrate. We had landed on the moon. Okay, Apollo 13 was a team effort from the uh, very beginning to the end. We've had a hardware restart. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. And it was that process of going through the cryostir. There was a fault in the tank, a design fault, and a procedural fault that existed well prior to the time that we took off. We may have had an instrumentation problem, flight. Roger. And we now had a fire inside the tank that blew the dome of the tank off. When the dome came off, the insulation caught fire. And fed by the oxygen, it was like a blowtorch racing through the bay of the spacecraft, tearing out the instrumentation and the plumbing and the electrical systems, till finally it blew the side of the spacecraft off. At which time, Jim Lovell called down to the ground, hey, Houston, we've got a problem. That series of events started the saga of Apollo 13. Throughout the entire Apollo 13 mission, the teams in mission control changed shifts almost regularly at eight-hour intervals. And the teams kept the mission going, kept working the problem as my teams tried to come up with the answers. And this team had it. Uh, I'm very proud of this team. I, I, Got a lot of recognition for the work that we did, but the real heroes of Apollo 13 were the people in the back rooms and over in the engineering facilities who came up with the answers we needed. The uh, exact words I used in mission control is we have never lost an American in space, and we sure as hell aren't gonna lose one now. This crew is coming home. You gotta believe it. Your team must believe it and we must take, make it happen. And this was a bit uh, too long for the uh, people during uh, doing the movie scripting. So they took the first part, then they added on never lost a crew in space on my shift. All shifts were my shift by definition. So it didn't matter whose shift it was, this was a crew that we had that was in trouble and we had to get them home.